because when you see roaches scattered, it makes you jump and yell. So I had my little flip flop, I was walking through, and you can hear the crunching as I was walking through the bedroom on the way to the bathroom. Man, it was nasty, man, but I had no choice, y'all. I felt like Short Round and Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Dr. Jones, the floor feel funny, what we walk on? It feel like fortune cookie. Hey, there ain't no fortune cookie, kid. Yo, what's up my YouTube fam? I'm back again with another story. I can remember when I was 19 years old, this is during my second year at college, I was feeling myself. I was <laughs> smelling myself. I thought I was the shit. I knew everything. And what I did know, I'll learn tomorrow. You know, I was going through a period of my life where the early 90s was setting in, hip hop was conscious, we all wore black, green, yellow, you know, we was African proud, Malcolm X was getting ready to come out, I was dating nothing but black women, you know, it was a prideful time. During that time also in college, I was rapping, I had equipment, I was producing beats, you know, it was cool. I got one of my songs played on the local radio. Yo, I was feeling myself. And I was dating this girl named Nicole. She was a year younger than me. And she could sing. And I was producing some of her tracks to be on my album, right? Baby Doll was fine. You ever seen the first house party? You remember Shireen? Well, Baby Doll looked just like Shireen. She was fine. Dark skin, long curly hair. Banging body, talented, gorgeous, beautiful smile, yeah. Well, I was producing her record, she was working on my record with me, and yeah, as we did back in the day, we was messing around. Wasn't a problem, but um, usually during that time, anybody I was dating, I would bring home to mom and dad, because I was still living, living with my parents. For some reason, my mom just didn't like her. One time, we were downstairs, and I was, we was hugging each other. Well, the way I was hugging her, I could, I could face towards the living room door. My mom walked through the door. All she seen was the back of her hugging me and grabbing my butt and kissing on my neck. And I was like this, like, hey, mom. Nicole jumped, oh, hi, Miss Antoine. My mom was pissed. It was never, ever a good thing. And that was the first impression when she first came over to meet my mom. It was all to the bad. Well, I was sexually active during the time. We was in a healthy sexual relationship. And some things are sacrilegious when it comes to sex. And some things people have taboos and don't care. I'm just going to cut to the chase. We were sexually active. Um, and I think Nicole had started her period. And we still went on with the sex act. And I was at her house. Well, not her house. She had moved in with her sister. And at the time when I first met Nicole, she was in one of those little halfway houses for bad girls. Then her life got changed around and she moved in with her sister who had two kids, right? Her older sister. Make a long story short, her sister was cool. She let her come over there and she started renting a room from her sister after she got out of the halfway house. Make a, like I said, we went in the bedroom, we did our thing. And I think she had started her period. So, when I got home, I guess some residue was in my underwear. And at the time, my mom was still doing my laundry. And like I said, I did my own laundry, but for the most part, my mom did the laundry. And um, like I said, I was 19. I was still in college. But I went to college one day, went to school, came back later on before I went to work at UPS. And my mom was furious. She goes, boy. Are you running around having sexual relations and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Mom, you know, because my mom was a hardcore Jehovah's Witness. 
And I felt like I was a man. So I wasn't going to hide it. I wasn't going to, you know, duck around corners. Yes, mom, we had sex. I, I think she was on her period. And that's probably why I have a little bit of residue, blood, whatever you want to call it, in my underwear. Man, she went and told my dad. I thought my dad would be on my side because, you know, he thought Nicole was fine. He goes, son, you can't be doing that white under this house, underneath this roof. You know, unacceptable. Well, like I said, I was feeling myself. So I said, you know what? I'm moving out. I packed my shit that day. All I had was clothes and a drum machine and a sampler, right? <laughs> and a mixer. I took all my stuff, put it in my little, my little bucket. I used to have a, a Fiat. Fiat was clean. It was a piece of shit, but it was clean. It was, it was light, baby blue, had rims. But you know what a Fiat stands for? A fix it again time, right? <laughs> but I bounced, put everything in the trunk of my car, the back seat of my car, and I went to Nicole's sister's house and I asked her, hey, do you mind if I stay with you? I'll pay you rent, you know, I'm on, I'm on my own. She was, she was like, hell yeah, I can use the money because she was on those assistants. She was on welfare. She was getting food stamps. So, And back then, you got paid and got food stamps on her every 1st and 15th. So she said more income coming in. And make a long story short, I think her sister had a little thing for me, but I didn't get down like that. And whenever I would come over, the place, the apartment was always clean. It was immaculate. To the point where I hooked my homeboy Scott. I said, Scott, man, she has an older sister. She ain't seeing nobody. You wanna come through and kick it? Maybe y'all get along. My homeboy Scott came through. Him and Nicole's sister started kicking it. Like on the weekends, we would watch BET all night. She'd get her food stamps. We'd be having steak, potatoes, vegetables, some dranky drank, drank. And that's right when um, DJ Quick, first album that came out. Man, we used to bump that thing religiously all the time. And then she'd feed her two little kids some hot dogs and some beans and rice. And sending them little 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 kids off to bed. As grown ups, we did our thing. Nicole and me would go to her bedroom. Scott and her sister would go to the other bedroom. We spend the night, weekend, boom. When I started living there, I started noticing some things. <coughs> the apartment wasn't as clean as it seemed to be in the front room. Once you dash back into the bedrooms, this apartment was infested with roaches. It was off a, off a street called Lemon Hill next to 65th. And these, and these apartments were notorious for being dirty. I didn't know that. I kind of heard rumors, but you know, when you ain't got no place to stay, you make it work. Because her neighbors were all Asian. And they would be drying meat outdoors in the front over the, over the, the rails of the, of the apartments. I'm like, what kind of meat is that? They had skinned cats out there. Man, it was, yeah, I felt like I was in some movie. It was disgusting. But, hey, it was home. But Nicole's apartment where she was staying at was infested with roaches, and I didn't even know it. Oh, my God. It was gross, embarrassing, because whenever I go to the bathroom and turn on the light, I hear the... roaches and then when I started living there <clears throat> the roaches became friendly they was no longer hiding when company came over they was out in force showing their ass it was disgusting man. I had my equipment over there I'd be trying to push buttons to, to do the drum machine roaches would come out between the little buttons I was like oh my god this is nasty it was like a movie it was so bad luckily I had a sleeping bag that I had for my parents house me and Nicole would have to get in that sleeping bag, zip ourselves up at night while laying on a mattress to go to sleep to avoid getting attacked by roaches. And God forbid you got to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. I remember one time I got up, unzipped the bag. I was creeping. I didn't want to turn on the lights because when you see roaches scatter, it makes you jump and yell. So I had my little flip flop, I was walking through, and you can hear the crunching as I was walking through the bedroom, 
on the way to the bathroom. Man, it was nasty, man. But I had no choice, y'all. I felt like Short Round and Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Dr. Jones, the floor feel funny. What we walk on? It feel like fortune cookie. Hey, there ain't no fortune cookie, kid. He liked that little torch and put it on the ground. Bugs everywhere. So I was scared to turn on. I was scared to turn on the light. So I would try to creep, get to the bathroom. You filling on the wall, looking for the light switch. I said, no, nah, I don't want to turn on the light switch. Cause God forbid you had to go number two. You had to sit there. Oh my God. I had no choice. I couldn't find everything. I had to switch the light on. Roaches was everywhere. It looked the floor was moving. And dude, it was embarrassing. I had my pride. I wasn't going home because I used to live in a big two-story house with my parents. Lovely, clean, nice, nice neighborhood. I'm in the slums, in the ghetto. You got people hanging cats outside their house, cooking them, and I'm living with roaches. And when her sister would run out of food, it was embarrassing. All I had was like beans and rice uh, to feed each other and the kids. You know, I was like, I wasn't used to that, having a, a minimum menu like that. I would go get McDonald's and Taco Bell and wouldn't come home right away when I got off work and eat. Or I would bring Nicole with me and we'd go get some McDonald's or something. I wasn't feeding the whole family, you know. It was, man, it was a trying time. But when you're 19, you think you know everything, that's how you live. And after about 30 days, I couldn't take it no more, man. I called my parents and I said, Mom, Dad, Mommy, Daddy, can I please come home? I'm sorry. <sighs> I couldn't do it. Me and Nicole broke up. I went and lived with my parents. And within a year, I moved out for, for, for real. I was almost 20, and I've been on my own ever since, man. But the moral of the story, man, don't be fighting with your parents. Listen to their rules and regulations while you're under their roof, you know? Your parents care about you, and they love you. They know what's best for you. That real world out there, man, I didn't even love Nicole. I was just being rebellious. And, dude, I was living with roaches. It was embarrassing, man. And my homeboy Scott would come over on the weekends, sometimes during the weeknights, because he's over there, you know, smacking them cakes when it came to Nicole's sister. And, um, yeah, she was good. Like, not like Nicole was perfect. Beautiful teeth. Now, her sister. They ate a lot of candy and stuff. She would give a lot of candy to her kids. So some of her fronts was missing. Little kids' fronts was missing. Looked like little Draculas, little Blackulas running around. It was ghetto, man. And um, Scott, you're a better man than me. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, hey. I know what it's like to be in an apartment infested with roaches, man. It was disgusting. A lot of my clothes I got rid of. I burnt them joints. My drum machine had to get screwdrivers and take it apart, make sure there was no eggs in there, man. It was it was all to the bad. I was trying to become the next Dr. Dre with my drum machine and sampler infested with roaches, man. It was... Whew. Yeah. Yeah. I was in a group called New Concept. I was in another group called Innovation Rap Sensation. Yeah, we call ourselves the IRS. <laughs> Those were the good old days, man. I love college. I thought people of color were more conscious in the 90s. We listened to people like Public Enemy, EPMD, and um, also KRS One, Boogie Down Productions. It was cool to be young and black at that time because we thought we knew what we were going in life because we looked back and see where we came from, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. And, you know, we didn't watch the news to get black history. They wasn't teaching it in school. It was all about that public enemy at the time, you know. And conscious rap was like the thing. But when you're young, you're very impressionable. And the moral of the story, like I said, listen to your parents. Not all that hippity hop. It will get you caught up and have your ass living with roaches and with women who was getting food stamps and on welfare and listen to DJ Quick every single day. Yeah. But hey, that's a true story of my second year of college when I was being rebellious, young and black and stupid, and got caught up, y'all. Got caught up living with roaches. But yo. Until next time, be sure to like, 
share, subscribe, and tell all your friends. And more importantly, leave them comments down below. Peace. And I'm out. True stories. Hello. Now, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Without you, there's no me. And do us a favor, stop by the website at www.blacktastic.net and pick up some merchandise, get yourself a hat, or pick up a t-shirt. There's things like that to help keep the channel going. And also, feel free to leave a donation on the home page at www.blacktastic.net. Thank you all so much. Again, you make this so much fun. Without you, there's no me. Until next time, see you later.